I'm not going to step on anybody's toes about religion or anything like that, but I think there was a time in life where I was blind to the reality of the realms of the moment. Is that, is that too much? Is that too poetic? In other words, I had blinders up in my radio world where I was able to envision people on the other side of this microphone. It was in 2020 where a higher energy said, nah, no, 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 no. You need to go out there. You need to walk the streets. You need to listen to how people are truly speaking. You need to embrace what is the real community. See what they're paying for groceries. Hear what they're paying for rent. Watch them as they try to struggle through several quarters and a couple of pennies just so they can get a black and mild. But they come up short. And what are you going to do? You going to go on the other side of the cash register? Are you going to pay for it so they can do it again, 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 and again? We are living some really weird times. We openly admit that. And we have been saying that uncertainty has become the king. And in these moments of uncertainty, we're putting our energy into the hands of other people. We want other people to make decisions for us. And, and if we stand up and say, no, do not treat me this way, there's always going to be somebody on the other side that's ready to fight. This war about going back to work, going back to the job, just continues to get the attention of so many big name people. Martha Stewart says, go to work. There are those that are now taking on the great Martha Stewart. Hey, it's Errol. This is the Daily Mess, a chronological walkthrough in everyday world. I am a daily writer. I don't envision this junk. It's happening. And we've got to be able to create the conversations so that things that have happened and have brought damage to people's dreams and ambitions and goals and passion, compassion, unity, it needs to be talked about so we can light new fires. This is The Daily Mess. Paying bills is a subject that hardly anybody wants to talk about. Don't you talk to me about that. Literally, I'm going to be honest with you. When it's time for me to pay bills, I walk into this office and I put on music of meditation. It is just the, the softest, most mind-blowing music because I've got to be able to go into a moment of calm to pay the bills. It's an expectation. I've been doing this since the age of 15. Pay the bills. But it plays with my heart. It's still a very important part of the process. To pay bills, one must be available to work. To earn what's being called today's living. <laughs> one look at that and one look at us. There's something wrong here. Because it doesn't match what we're wearing, what we're eating, driving, and watching. We have one amazing, out-of-control appetite. When rent isn't met, there's accountability, a price you're going to have to pay. In most cases, that place of business is going to fine you dollars and cents that you probably don't have. Here's the part about being a grandparent that you really don't read in books, and you sure in the hell didn't pick it up while you were in high school or college. Being a grandparent puts you too far from how to teach the actions and reactions of those on the other side of your children. We can mention and or suggest, but ultimately, the one generation difference doesn't have a platform. This is the part of getting old that really sucks. Because when you're falling witness to your children's children entering their own space without the requirements of survival... It's a tough thing to swallow because you're standing over there, afar. We offer, but the wisdom of many chapters keeps itself at bay because of a Star Wars energy force is much bigger than I. You want to write a book? You want to get into that field? Research the relationship between grandchildren and grandparents in this modern age. I see it every day at the essential job where the grandparents are taking care of their children's children. But are they teaching the valuable lessons of the requirements of survival? I love it when they allow the children to understand more of what an ATM card is or what Apple Pay is. But it does ache in my heart when they say, what's our phone number? 
oh, it's that, I don't know. I, I got to look it up on the smartphone. I, I don't know. Even parents do that. What's your phone number? I don't know. The requirements of survival in a modern age. If one thing bad should happen, can you do it? I'm not trying to be negative. I only want to help open a door that will help you put together the tools that'll be waiting for you when it does happen. It's not if, it's when. Sitting down to keep a list, to keep an open face journal, having conversations with your future self. Did you do this? This is what this is like now. What will happen if you do do this and we prepared for it? I don't want to sound like a grandfather, but I think I probably sound like a curmudgeon, don't I? The grandfather that deserves to have his tires flattened out there in the driveway. But the goal is to reach, to find that path, to teach. Because it's very difficult to listen in this modern age. I just had a great conversation with Sheriff Paula S. Dance from the A&E TV show 60 Days In. She had a brilliant quote. The quote was, in jail is where we meet people. See, the rest of us on the outside, we meet them before the crime. But the sheriff meets them for the first time on the inside. And that's why they are doing everything profusely to get them their GEDs, to get them to understand their skills to grow with them so that when they are set free, they're not coming back. But how do they get in there? What are we doing on the outside that is basically, what are we doing on the outside? What should we be doing on the outside to keep them from going inside? The physical act of survival comes with a price. Uh, Another quote that I got, I was with Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House. I was with him about two hours ago. His quote was, it's not what I'm saying, it's what you're hearing. That's a life changer too. Because we could both be listening to the same story over and over again and come up with two interpretations. Things to think about as you build your toolkit to survive, to be a leader. Words I wish I could share with my grandchildren on the other side of my daughter. I'm Arrow, and that's The Daily Mess.